So please welcome for an important conversation, a great champion of small business, the chairman and CEO of American Express, Ken Chenault, and and an entrepreneur who is committed to helping small businesses succeed and whose success is an inspiration to all entrepreneurs, Jack Ma, the founder and executive chairman of Alibaba. Thank you. Well, thank you, Karen, for that very warm um, introduction. And I must say that Karen uh, has been, Jack, just an incredible advocate for small business. And, I can feel it. <laughs> and has been a leader. So I would say that she's one of us. Yes. Uh, in the best sense of the word. And I also want to thank Jack for joining us because... Jack is not only an incredible visionary, but he made it happen. And he really has a passion and a belief and a higher purpose. And I think helping small businesses really represents that higher purpose. And so we're delighted that you could join us. And I want to thank the entire Chicago community for being here. Uh, we feel very welcome uh, in the city. We had a meeting with the mayor uh, today, and we thank you for joining us. I have to tell you that I first met Jack the day that Alibaba went hey, public. Yeah. And that was obviously a happy day. It was a monumental day. <laughs> but what was impressive to me, and I had the good fortune of being seated next to him at lunch, and... I thought he'd probably talk about the IPO. But what Jack talked about was the importance of small business and how passionate he was about serving, understand that, serving small businesses. And that tells you a lot about who he is and why Alibaba has been so successful and in fact, Jack and his team were not the ones on the podium uh, during the opening bell, uh, for ringing the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange. They had their small business customers do that honor. And I think that was very symbolic of the commitment that you've had to small business. As Karen said, small business is something that's very important to our company. We've been around for 165 years but we started off as a small company. Every big company started off as a small company. But what we did do is 25 years ago, we were the first financial services company to put together a dedicated unit that was 100% focused on, frankly, our mission, which was we want to help small businesses do more business. Uh, that really is our sole mission. And so while we've served small businesses over 165 years, we're now very, very focused on what we can do to help them grow their business. And I would just say to you, Jack, that there are a number of our small business customers in the audience today, and we certainly welcome them. Thank you. And so while Alibaba's history may not be quite as long as ours, although I would say your market cap is certainly much larger. <laughs> uh, they were founded 15 years ago, obviously for the purpose of helping small business. And since then, they've enabled millions of people to start and run small businesses in China. And so, as Karen said, we're here to talk about small businesses, what small businesses can do for the economy. And I think it's time now, Jack, yeah. to get started. And so I'm going to ask you the first question. And we're certainly fortunate, as I said earlier, to be joined by a number of successful small business 
organizations and entrepreneurs here in Chicago. And what I've learned from speaking with small business owners over the years is they have one thing in common, a deep passion for what they do. And it's what drove them to start their businesses in the first place and what has kept them going over the years. And so I'd love for you to talk about the passion that led to the creation of Alibaba back in 1999 and whether in fact your motivation has changed over the years. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Thank you, everyone. I, I, um, every time I'm invited to talk to the SME, small business entrepreneurs, I feel excited because when I see the people's eyes, I know we're the same animals. <laughs> <laughs> we have the dreams, we have the passion, and we have a failure, we have a frustration, but we always say we have to survive. <clears throat> but not like the big companies, you go there, people talk about a competition next quarter, IPO, share price, you know, that's boring things. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, I really thank you know, Ken and American Express for, for have done so much for the small business. Alibaba, the name why we're choosing Alibaba is that we believe internet is a treasure island for small business. So we say Alibaba is open sesame for small business, business online. And the other thing is that um, it, it's my personal business, uh, personal experience that caused me focus on helping small business. I graduated from university, applied jobs for, four, for 30 times, all rejected by people. And most of them, the 30 companies, are all big companies, including one of American companies called KFC. <laughs> <laughs> we, we went there for 24 people, and 23 were accepted. I was the only guy kicked out. <laughs> I don't know. So after uh, rejected by so many times, and I think, well, maybe God wants me to do something myself, not working for others. And I started my first translation agency. It was tough business. My rent for the, uh, for the small office was like $300. My first month revenue is $50. <clears throat> It was tough to survive, and nobody could help us. And later, I, I uh, set up the company, and I, I, um, I tried to borrow 3,000 US dollars from the banks. But after looking for anybody, talk to anybody for three months, nobody gave us the money. So I know it's so difficult. It's so difficult to run small business in China and everywhere in the world, because big companies have got government support, Multinational companies supported by capital market, small business, they have to survive themselves. They are, they are the innovators, they are the dreamer makers. And when the internet comes, I know this thing is good, and I, I think I should make this, comp this tech. If, if the technology is really that good, how can we use the technology to enable, empower small business? Let them be strong and enough to compete with the big companies, help them to survive. So that was my, my dream. 1999, and I invited eight, another 17, altogether 18 founders in my apartment, in my garage. And I told them, we, we, I don't know, that day we, we recorded. Mm -hmm. That was 1999, February, 20, February 19th. I told for two hours, say, we will use internet to help small business, and in 10, 20 days, we'll be the top 10 websites in the world. At that time, we were like uh, ranking 100,000 something. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we said, if we can be successful, 80% of the young people in China can be successful, because we don't have their money, we don't have a rich father, we don't have a relationship, we don't have government, really, we don't have anything. We just together 50, thousand US dollars from 18 founders. We say, we would focus on helping the SMEs. 15 years passed, now we today become this size. But we ask ourselves, what, what the, uh, the secret sauce? Why will we be surviving? It's because of SMEs. Without them, we will never be that luck. And today, if we forget about them, now we're big, we're only, then we start to change our focus from small business to big, our luck will leave. We'll be bankrupt. We have no, no future. So that's 
that we say it's not only the, at the beginning was the passion, now it's the more like a responsibility and the love you have to SMEs. I think, you know, when I come into this room, people want to take in pictures. It's, I, I'm so happy there are a lot of women entrepreneurs here. <laughs> this is our, <laughs> this is uh, one of the secret sources of Alibaba success. We have 33% of the senior management are women. And 49% 49, 49 of our employees are women. We used to have more than 50%, but we acquired some companies that have more men, so. <laughs> One of the reasons why can they do better in the internet time, because, because women, they're really good at make other people happy, and the other thing, they care others more than they care themselves. Men care of us, of, of, you know, women have to care about <laughs> why, you know, husband, or father, or kids, and meanwhile, take the work. And we find a lot of women in our company, they can make the product so user-friendly. They consider the customer more. And the other thing is uh, more than 60, I think this fifth, it's like 57% of the sellers on our site are women. Because on the internet, nobody knows you're women or men. They only care whether you serve well on the line. So, especially when I see these people, so those SMEs, the power sellers, the, 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 you know, I, I remember months ago I was in Beijing a hotel. I was, there's the, the barman opened the door, a very handsome young man, he said, thank you, sir. My wife works for, t is, has a small shop on Taobao. She makes more money than I do. And I want to say thank you very much. <laughs> So <clears throat> that is something, you know, we, we can do something to change the world, change people's life. Uh, the, the, this makes me keep on doing that. I think if we can do this in China, why we cannot do this in America? Why we cannot do this in Haiti? We cannot do this in Philippines. And SMEs are the stars of this world. You cannot, yeah, it's good to have a moon, it's good to have the suns, but when you see the stars in the sky, you know life is beautiful. So this is what I think. This is why I'm still working hard, passionate. I think if I lose in that, I will have no passion for work. Well, I think as, as you said, Jack, the reality is I think small business owners have the passion and they have courage. Yes. And they have the willingness to strike out on their own and uh, I think that's why we celebrate small business uh, and are so committed to their success. Yeah, no matter how big they are, or no matter right. how big Alibaba, American Express, IBM, and Microsoft, Google is, they all came from small. Right. The sm big company will get small and disappear, but the small companies have a chance to go big. So I, uh, I'm passionate about that. Good. Yeah. So Jack, Alibaba obviously is a household name in China. It's increasingly becoming a household name around the world. But many people in the US are not quite sure mm -hmm. what Alibaba is. And can you give us two or three things that would help people understand more about Alibaba and what it is? Okay, so I don't think, how many people have been here using Alibaba services? Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> I think you're using the Alibaba.com or AliExpress.com, but you don't using the Tmall and Taobao.com and AliExpress. We are a, well, very complicated. We start from Alibaba B2B, helping small business do import-export. And then we do the B2C, Taobao and Tmall, and then we build up the Alipay, the payment system, and we have the ten of the logistics system. What we, our mission is helping doing business easier. So we are not e-commerce company. We help others to do e-commerce. If you want to have the payment, we solve the payment solution. If you want to find customers, Alibaba, Taobao, Tmall helping you find the customers. If you want to have the logistic, we help you to solve the logistic problems. So we are the e-commerce enabler. And uh, we do not buy and sell like Amazon. Because we think we should help 
small business to buy and sell easy and effectively. We do not own the uh, logistic uh, the services, but there are about two million delivery guys helping us to serve. Today, our uh, our last year, our sales is 390 billion U.S. dollars. This is a, this is not a small company doing, <laughs> but we call ourselves we are of the small business, by the small business, and for the small business. It's this 390 billion dollars. 95 percent of them are sold by the 10 million small business. They are all small business. And our sales this year is going to be over, I think December, if we're lucky enough, will be bigger than Walmart globally. And uh, which in five years, I want to say here, make a bet, small business always make a bet. <laughs> in five years, we will be bigger. We will go across one trillion US dollar sales. <clears throat> and that is going to be done, not by Alibaba, done by small business. How we can empower them, supporting them, the small business to sell more. And we only have 34,000 people. From 18 people in my apartment to today, we have 34,000 people. And we are going to reach, go across 1 trillion US dollars by less than 50,000 people. Because we know the less people we have, the fewer people we have, the more innovative we will create our technology and products to empower the others to hire more people. Because the more people we have will be very bureaucratic. So this is what we're doing. And we, are, we have 350 million users shopping on active buyers. And we have 120 million people shopping on our site every day. And last year, November the 11th day, which is, uh, Karen said, like a, an American Black Friday? Yes. Right, you have a Friday. We sold uh, 9.6 billion US dollars that day. And this year, I don't know, people guess like 12, 15 billion dollars. We need a lot of good products from outside China because I don't think China can afford to have like 15, 20 billion dollars product for within one day. So that's one of the reasons I come here looking for support from you guys. So I think what's, what's interesting is if you think about 350 million active buyers, that's larger than the entire US population. Uh, oh, yeah. That's pretty impressive, uh, really amazing. And I think we've talked about small businesses that they're the fabric of the local economies yeah. that they operate in. And they're key contributors, obviously, to the overall economic health yes. uh, of many countries. Karen talked about the importance of small business in the US. And we're certainly very pleased that we've worked with small businesses for such a long period of time with programs like Small Business Saturday. But you're here in the US. You're talking to small US businesses today. Tell us what you really want to say to small businesses in the US. <clears throat> well, first, uh, people keep asking us, what's, what's your next? Since you're already you know, that big in China. But compared to yesterday, 10, 15 years ago, we are big. But compared to 15 years later, we're still a baby. We think the global market is so big. That there are small business in almost every nation. How we can empower them, helping them to do business across the board. This is what we believe is the right future. And I think that in the past 20 years, I come here to want to convince the small business in America. In the past 20 years, globalization means big company can do globalized. Only big companies. Small companies have no, chance, no opportunity at all. But today, because of the internet, 
cross board trading for small business is so easy. And what I want to do, what we want to do, is that we want to build up a, a something. We, we have not figured out the name yet. WTO was set for big companies. We want to build up an EWTO set only for small business. Using the cheapest logistics system, payment system, finding the buyers, supplies across the board. Anybody, if you have ideas, you can sell things abroad. So our strategy in America, people say, wow, when are you going to come to compete with eBay and Amazon? No, we're not coming. I think eBay and Amazon did a great job in America, but I think we can help the American small business sell things to China. China today, the middle class, has already over 300 million. It's almost like the same, pop, it's the same size of American population. Next to 10 years, China will have more than half billion people become the middle class. So the middle class people, they need good products, good services. And I, I think the American have the good products, good services. Chinese people love American products. But how we can help those innovative, it's, it's, it's very innovative, a new small American business go to China. Because big companies, they're already everywhere in China. Small business, using internet to sell, meeting the demanding. When you have 120 million people shopping on our site every day, you can sell almost everything. Last year, we had some test in Seattle, we help the American farmers to sell cherries. 160 60 tons of cherries were sold to 80,000 Chinese families within 72 hours. Before the order, the cherry was still on the trees. We started to play the order. <laughs> and we started to place the order, and then they, they pay the deposit, and we ship, and in 72 hours, it's sold. We sold Alaska seafood to Chinese families. Well, there is a thing which we did not succeed for Cal in Germany, some uh, disaster of fresh crabs. You know, the, the, the lake crabs. You in America eat the sea crab, that's big, but the lake crab, that's small, tiny. We Chinese people love, but the German people definitely don't know how to eat it. <laughs> so we start to, people start to sell to China. Within one day, we ordered 300,000 crabs online. The people there are happy, and the people in China are happy. So I think our strategy is pretty, pretty simple. Your innovative products, services, bring those small, medium-sized companies in America, bring them to China, and let the China need, you know, Chinese, I would say China in the next 20 years will become the, the largest importer countries in the world, because China's resources, the water, the soil, the air, can never support such a huge demand. I think if China still keep on exporting, we will never see the broad sky in China. Mm. We, have, we have to leverage the global resources to, to, to serve 1.3 billion people. So this is why I'm coming here and I think, guys, just to test it, right? You will guarantee get a paid by working with the American Express. We, we've been talking together. We can guarantee a, you 100% for sure. If you sold the things, you'll get the money back in time, quickly. And you, what, you, what you do is just to guarantee good product, good services, good response. And we will bring the consumers, bring the customers. That's what I want. That's terrific, and we want that also. <laughs> yeah. So Jack, your turn to ask a few questions. Yes, I have some questions for Ken. Well, what challenges do you see small business owners facing today, and how is American Express working to address their needs? I know American Express has been focusing on supporting SME for so many years, but small business have all kinds of needs, all kinds of troubles. What do you see today they have? Well, in trying to help small businesses do more business, there are two key areas in the US. One is access to short-term working capital. 
If you think about a small business, they get sandwiched between products and services that are developed for large corporations or individual consumers. And what's very important is to customize the products and services to meet the needs of small business owners. And those needs, from a short-term working capital standpoint, are over a 30 to 90 day period. And I think what's very critical to understand is in the US alone, excluding payroll, small businesses spent $4.8 trillion. There is a pent up demand for access to working capital that can be put to good use. And so what we do with our card products is one, it's a seamless, convenient way to access working capital. So on our charge cards, you have access for 55 days. We have a product called the Plum Card that um, you, you have access nearly 90 days. And what's very important is we are providing unsecured lending. So we're not asking small businesses, you've got to sign up for a long-term loan and there are a number of restrictions, the paperwork, the time periods take significant effort. So access to working capital is critical. And one of the things we've seen is increasingly small businesses are using our payment products to fund their business. So one of the highest growing categories, small business overall is a very high growth category for us. But for small businesses that are spending on our card $10,000 or more per transaction, those transactions have grown at a compounded annual growth rate of over 20%. So that demonstrates the demand that is out there for short-term access to working capital, which is very critical. The second thing that's very important is that small businesses want help with how do they grow their business? How do they make it more efficient? We've created capabilities, an open form, an online platform where we dispense advice to small businesses on all aspects of how to run their business. Opportunities for them to interact with other small business owners to help grow their business. And so what is most important is we're using our payments model, which is an integrated payments model, where we have information and data on the merchant who they're purchasing products and supplies from and information on them to customize our underwriting and fraud so that we can responsibly lend to them. And then what's very, very important in our spending capacity that we provide for them is every single transaction, we have developed models and algorithms that are customized to their needs. And literally no other company has those capabilities. And so that allows us to customize the access to working capital and to increase their spending capacity and to provide them with unsecured loans in a, in a responsible way that we can continue. So those are two needs, Jack, that I think are very important. That's good, that's good. So bef before my next question, I want to tell a bit story about small business and interesting, I think we can remember. <clears throat> my friend, Howard Schultz. Yes. From Starbucks. He told me one story, it was very interesting. He said he went to London one day. He went to our most richest, busiest street. He saw there's a tiny shop selling cheese. He said, how can you make a living by selling cheese? You even cannot pay the rent, it's such busy, expensive road. So he walked inside, there's an old man with mustache and dirty and eating cheese and he said, sir, can I ask you a question? How can you survive for such a small business in a such expensive area? This man said, buy some cheese and I tell you. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So he said, pick up some cheese and $20 cheese. And then he said, sir, what's your answer? The guy said, come on, young man. 
Look at the, you know, all the sh- this street, these beautiful buildings, they all belong to me. <laughs> My family has been focusing on selling cheese for generations. And I love cheese. I love sell cheese. Every time I made money, I buy a shop, give it to the others. Buy, buy. That's the small business. Absolutely. And it's been there for 100 years. That's so my story. question's for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alibaba plans to last 102 years. Because I believe any company, when you, survive, when you start the first stage of a long vision, we want 102 years is that we were born 1999. Last century, we had a one year. This century, we want to have 100 years. Next century, we have a one year. 102 years cross three centuries. So every decision we make, because we have to think about long term. It's not easy for six, past the 16 years. We have another 87 year, 86 years to go. It's tough. American Express is 165 years old company. How do you continue to innovate to success, succeed? Well, I think, Jack, it starts off with, and I would say Alibaba is doing this very well. It first starts off with really understanding what are the values and attributes of your brand. Mm -hmm. Because I think a brand and a company has to stand for something. And the fact that you stand for small businesses, that's very meaningful. And to navigate through 165 years, and I will tell you that as far as American Express is concerned, we've navigated through tremendous periods of change, tremendous periods of disruption, and we've managed through self-inflicted mistakes Hmm. that we have made in the management of our company. But we've had two hallmarks that have helped us navigate through these opportunities and challenges. One is what I call constancy of values, meaning that American Express started off, some of you may not realize this, as a freight forwarding company, really moving goods and services across the United States and around the world. We then evolved into a travel company, then we offered traveler's checks, we got into the payments business. Now, while we didn't start the freight forwarding company in a garage, what was very, very clear is we started small. <clears throat> but what was the critical ingredient that made a freight forwarding company successful? That I'm going to entrust my goods, I live in Massachusetts, and I'm going to ask you to move my personal belongings or something I want to send to someone from New York to San Francisco. And you're going to trust me. Well, trust is critical. The second is core attribute, service, security, customer commitment. Those have been for us in existence for 165 years. Even though no one could have imagined that we would have come from a freight forwarding company to a payments commerce services company. No one, not even you, Jack, probably. (laughs) The second is continual reinvention. And I believe this strongly. And I say this to companies at any size, innovate or die. Yeah, That's the reality, innovate or die. You have to constantly have a focus on innovation. So reinvention is in our DNA. Now, to have that reinvention over 165 years, here's where the challenge is, is how do you fight complacency, particularly when you're successful? Because that's when people get complacent. That's when people get relaxed. When they're falling off the cliff, you know you're falling off the cliff. (laughs) But when you've won that victory and everyone is telling you you're terrific, often you don't examine and say, what's the future? What do I need to focus on going forward? And so what that means is that sometimes you have to challenge your business model. 
And I'll give you one example. American Express developed one of the most creative products ever in financial services. And that was a traveler's check. It was brilliant. 90% of the earnings of the company came from the traveler's check. In 1958, there was a intense debate at the company of should we enter the payments business? And some very intelligent people inside and outside the company said, you do not want to do that because it will cannibalize your traveler's check business. You're going to risk 90% of the earnings of the company in a new business? Are you crazy? And these were very logical people, but they lacked vision. They weren't focused on the future. They were self-satisfied with the success of the company. And imagine if American Express had stayed a traveler's check company. We would not be in, in existence today or we'd be a very small company. And so what was important is, and we've done this in each area, is to challenge the existing business. Now here's what we did not debate. Any business that we enter, has to be focused on serving the customer. We have to operate it with integrity. We have to operate having a trusting relationship with our customer. So constancy of values, continual reinvention, the willingness to cannibalize yourself. And one of the things I say in our company is to become the company that will put us out of business before our competitors do because I think that is an important understanding that we're not entitled because of our success to stay in business. We have to earn that every day. And the way we do that is to serve our customers. And the only way you serve your customers well is you not only provide them with outstanding service, you're innovating every day to make their lives better. And that's what companies need to be focused on.